Hi, this is Judith Karakshoni and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 164 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the challenges associated with CTO PCI in patients with previous bypass. The patient presented with medical refractory angina. He had previous coronary bypass with crafts to the LAD diagonal and obtuse marginal branch and was found to have a right coronary artery CTO with ischemia and viability in the inferior wall in the right coronary artery distribution. Coronary angiography showed CTOs of the LAD and the circumflex with a severe lesion in the distal left main. There was a septal coming from the proximal LAD that appeared that it might connect with the PDA. The vein graft to the LAD was patent without significant disease. There was also a patent lima to the diagonal as well as a patent saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal that was supplying epicardial collaterals to the PDA and the right posterior lateral. The RCA was occluded all the way to the distal bifurcation. The right coronary was occluded at the ostium. We therefore have an osteal RCA CTO with very long occlusion length from the ostium to the cracks, heavy calcification, bifurcation of the distal cap, and maybe some septal collaterals from the LAD, and definitely epicardial collaterals from the vein graft of the obtuse marginal branch. As a result, given the osteal occlusion of the right coronary artery, our first approach was retrograde. We decided to try to cross retrograde to the septals if possible, and then if not, uh, convert to retrograde via epicardials. Unfortunately, there was significant calcification in the distal left main, that could not be crossed with um, a balloon or microcatheter. And given the small size of the septal collateral, we decided to convert to retrograde through the epicardial collateral from the circumflex. Although this collateral appeared to be favorable, it turned out there was a significant bend at the early portion of the epicardial collateral going to the posterior descending artery that uh, provided a lot of difficulty in crossing. This is uh, an injection through the microcatheter. This is a turnpike LP, and we do have, again, significant tortuosity earlier on. We did multiple attempts to cross this collateral using a SU-03 guide wire, which is the guide wire of choice for these tortuous epicardial collaterals. This was quite challenging. It was hard getting into the collateral, but then there was this bend that the wire had a hard time negotiating. So after multiple attempts, we were able to advance the SUO3 into this proximal portion of the epicardial collateral. It was going into a side branch. We brought it back. Now it's trying to make the band. And eventually, the guide wire did make the band and successfully crossed all the way to the right PDA. We were able to deliver the turnpike LP all the way to the distal RCA. And then we tried to advance a retrograde knuckled wire in order to cross retrograde from the distal to the proximal right coronary artery. However, this was very challenging. We used a Mongo guide wire, but after multiple attempts and after knuckling the wire, it became entrapped within the microcatheter. And we unfortunately had to remove both the microcatheter and the guide wire, losing our position. This was a setback, but fortunately, we were able to rewire through that epicardial collateral. And then uh, we used, uh, again, another microcatheter. We tried several guide wires, but uh, we had a lot of difficulty in engaging the RCA. Things changed when we switched for a Corsair Pro. Then we were actually able to advance an angled Mongo guide wire that seems to, now, to be now tracking along the course of the calcified right coronary artery. The wire subsequently advanced fairly quickly all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. Now that we have a retrograde demarcation of the location of the right coronary artery, we did some additional injections undergrade using an AL1 guide. And now we may be able to see maybe some entry into the RCA. 
We used uh, various uh, guide wires and eventually using an Astato 20. And we were able to advance it subintimally inside the structure of the proximal right coronary artery. It was heavily calcified, but uh, the guide wire eventually, using the retrograde guide wire as a marker, the undergrade Astato did make good progress and uh, could be advanced uh, inside the structure of the right coronary artery. That was quite hard, once again, because of the heavy calcification of the proximal RCA. We then uh, predilated, inserted uh, a guide extension, and then performed um, the guide liner-assisted uh, reverse card, advancing the retrograde guide wire into the undergrade guide extension, externalized an R350, and predilated the entire right coronary artery with various balloons. The next challenge was to advance a guide wire to the right posterior lateral. We did use a Sasuke Dualumi microcatheter, but the wire seemed to go in the subintimal space. We then used various guide wires in order to make uh, progress into recanalizing the right posterior lateral. And uh, contralateral injection does so that the guide wire goes in the subintimal plane. We tried uh, with various guide wires to advance subintimally across the location of the right posterior lateral, but that was extremely challenging because of heavy calcification. We also considered going retrograde to the right posterior lateral, but because of severe tortuosity and small size of the collateral, we did not believe that the risks were worth it. Unfortunately, we could not deliver a stingray balloon. We, we tried with uh, several balloons, two balloons, and we tried with a lot of uh, predilatation, and we were unfortunately unable to deliver the stingray to the right posterior lateral. As a result, uh, in the end, after a long time, we decided to proceed with standing, securing the PDA. We placed uh, four drag eluting stents all the way from the PDA to the ostium of the right coronary artery. Using IVUS to optimize the stents, there was, of course, significant calcification. And this is the final result. We did have flow into the right coronary artery all the way to the PDA. There is some subintimal dissection and there is some flow into the right posterior lateral, which is not optimal, but given that it has been a very long period of time in the case with 131 minutes of fluoroscopy and uh, 5.2 gray of radiation, we had to stop at this time. The plan was to assess the patient's symptoms and potentially have him come back for a repeat attempt to recanalize the right posterior lateral if he continued to have significant symptoms. Several potential lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, CTO-PCI in previous bypass patients can be very challenging. There were multiple levels of complexity here, including the osteal occlusion, the severe calcification, bifurcation in the distal cap, and uh, the need for going through epicardial collaterals. Because of the osteal occlusion, we used a primary retrograde approach through an epicardial collateral that was eventually successful. It was difficult to cross it, and uh, the secret was the SUO3, that is a very soft guide wire that can advance through tortuosity. Then we had a lot of difficulty engaging through the distal cap and advancing a knuckle. We had the freezing of the wire and the microcatheter, requiring removal of both, but eventually using a more supportive microcatheter at larger diameter, such as the Corsair, we were able to advance a retrograde knuckle wire all the way to the ostium. Unfortunately, the bifurcation on distal cap could not be uh, perfectly resolved. We could not re-enter into the right posterior lateral and get a perfect result. However, there is still some undergrade flow, which uh, might help uh, with um, recanalization down the line. This is a form of subintimal plaque modification or the so-called investment procedure that might help uh, with subsequent attempts to recanalize the right posterior lateral CTO. Thank you.